Listeners everywhere, welcome to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan, the weekly fix for your screen addiction and a trusted source for discussion of all things film and television. Please keep in mind that for the purposes of this podcast, Joel and Ryan are not acting as journalists, but rather fellow moving picture enthusiasts. All of their opinions should be taken as such. Also, please be warned that while Joel and Ryan may seem like petulant children, they are, in fact, adults who may occasionally use adult language. While they promise to bleep out all the worst words, it's a good bet you will still understand what they were saying. And now, with no further ado, here's Joel and Ryan. with joel and ryan i am joel and i'm ryan and we are super thrilled to have you back for another week we have uh it's been a bit of a week it has been a bit of a week has how has your week been ryan i kind of even didn't even get a chance to ask you because i was complaining about my week it was a bit of a week for me you had a bit well. no Ooh, i'm sorry to hear that week. yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> in and amongst the chaos and and everything uh, we got a really super special opportunity to talk we to somebody did. in the industry that is one yeah. kind and really special. And it, it makes me feel like our show's special because we just got to brush by her a little bit in her life. It's really, really cool. People should yes, be yes. So those of you, uh, those listeners out there that are joining us maybe for the very first time because they are tuning in to hear uh, the interview with the guests. Uh, we thank you so much for checking out our show. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you enjoy uh, the interview. Um, a while back, I guess it was four years. I mean, uh, well, we've had other really, uh, we've been lucky enough to talk to J.O. Sanders. Uh, um, oh, my God. Uh, uh, um, Charles <laughs> Gay Lazarico. Charles, yeah, Char- I couldn't remember his first name. <laughs> I'm like, Char- what? Charles de Lazarico. first name's uh, the uh, easy part, Joel. I know. Oh, I know. That's what I always screw up anyway. Um, you know, we've had uh, we've had some brushes with with fame anyway. But yeah, it, yeah. And, and they've been nice enough to come and join us on our show and talk about sure. talk about the industry a little bit. Uh, four years ago, uh, I was part of a production of West Side Story uh, at the Guthrie Theater. And uh, the woman playing uh, Anita is a fantastic uh, performer named Anna Isabel who uh, is a bit of a superstar down in uh, down in Puerto Rico. Uh, she was the winner of essentially um, what's well, called Viva El Sueño. I believe, I hope I'm not butchering that too badly, but it's essentially Puerto Rican Idol. She won that, uh, I think, back in 2009. Um, she is, so she has been a singer, a pop singer, an actress, a dancer. She is what she is one of the hardest working uh not just performers but just people that i know she is an absolutely driven amazing uh woman and she came in um literally i here's a little quick backstory when she came in i i talk a little bit about how intimidated frankly we all were when she showed up um at the guthrie uh, for west side story we did not know what to think because we're like Holy, this is a woman who's won a con, you know, big, she, she's a pop singer. She's won contests. I mean, she, what is she going to be like? She can be a diva. Is she going to be whatever. And, and, and she has a very strong energy to her. So it was a little intimidating. And then we realized, oh no, she's just like this super awesome person, but she's so, she's so crafty and so suave. Can I say just yeah. on that point that seeing her as a stranger from the audience on the stage, that is exactly the same thing this is a person who uh, in character comes on very very strong and you know and just takes the stage by storm and we've talked about that in films you know how it it's 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 it that you almost that almost has to come naturally because if it's a if it's a if it's a struggle or it's a there's an agenda involved Mm -hmm. you feel it and you feel you feel the disingenuousness of it she just didn't have any of that. And, and as you say, as the play went along and as things got more serious and out of the course of West Side Story, that character and what she goes through, she, it, it just became grounded in reality in a remarkable way. It was really, 
I mean, I knew from the start because I just, I guess I've seen enough plays and I guess the way my mind thinks, but I knew as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh my God, we're really in for something special here. It's yeah. obvious from yeah. the first words, you know, that it's, and yet that she's not a scene stealing person at all. So it's nothing like that. It's all comes right out of the work. And that's such a, it's mm -hmm. such a miracle to, to behold that. I really was blown away when I saw her in that show. Yeah, she she was uh, obviously absolutely the part, tremendous. The part itself is <clears throat> yeah, it's one of the it's, it's a fantastic role for a, yeah. a young woman like her. But it she just wow. And, and you know, and we that the production that we did at the Guthrie was the first was the first officially licensed version of West Side Story that was allowed to be done without the Jerome Robbins choreography, without a lot of those. There, there are a lot of rules that it, you, if you were going to produce West Side Story that you had to follow. Uh, and there were still a lot of rules that we had to follow that the a Guthrie had to negotiate. If you were going to yeah, <laughs> yeah, a brand new set. Yeah, a brand new set of rules in order yeah, yeah. to do this production. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, and and so it 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 did it allowed um for this uh just this amazing process of uh Joe Hodge, the director, Maya Garcia, especially as the choreographer. Um, to work with the the performers to really create something uh, new, um, yeah. And we always, uh, I, I I've always said, and we several of us have talked about it. Um, the woman who played Mar Maria Mia Pinero, uh, she was the heart, and she was like the heart of our production. Um, Anna Isabel was the spine. She hmm. was the thing that uh, that I mean it it. it she was the show. She was the structure. She was the the framework by which all of us, she helped. I mean, even for someone like me, who I was glad hand, I was in two scenes, the whole show, but damn it, if I didn't know, I better bring it because of what she, the level that everybody else, especially because of Anna, was raising everybody to. It was, so she's she's awesome. Uh, we got to know her. Um, I, I touch on this a little bit in there. So just for uh, context, Anna's dressing room, I don't think I touch on this uh, in the interview, but Anna's, uh, Anna and Mia's dressing room was right next to the dressing room where they put all of us old guys. The guys, the guy who played Doc, uh, Shrank, Krupke, Gladhand, the four of old guys who don't dance. Um, we, were, <laughs> we were in that dressing room. At least not in this yeah, particular not in this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she would come over all the, she would come over and just pick our brains and ask us questions and say, hey, I'm, I'm uh, you know, this, the, I have an interview with this agent and, uh, you know, I want to know, and they're asking these questions, how should I respond to a question like this? And, and she just wanted all this input, especially from some of the veterans uh, who have had uh, a lot more on-camera experience than I have. Um, you know, I, hell, I learned a lot, but, but she knows how to ask incredibly great questions too. She, th th and that's what I mean by just driven. She is, uh, focused on, on being the, on becoming the best version of herself that she can be. And, um, and is, well, is so determined to get there. For fans of Anna that have shown up here, you get to get a pretty cool interview. And, and, uh, the, one of the cool things about it is that it, she she's she's clearly given a lot of interviews <laughs> during this process so she's 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 got a little arsenal of of anecdotes and stuff to share but this this is different because it's not good morning america joel and her have a connection from having had this artistic experience before and i think something is something to think about when you're watching it two artists talking to one another on that level is a real delight. We do get to see that sometimes in art and we get to see it sometimes on the extras on our DVDs, you know what I mean? But it is different when it's, uh, when it's not, you know, some critic or just some t talk show person asking the questions or some journalist. And a, it's a conversation that goes deeper than the usual stuff. And so yeah um, yeah with we, we not tried much I was, further ado you guys yeah i was so i was lucky to catch up with her um the other day she's in new york uh i'm i'm here in the twin cities we talk over zoom there's a little bit of construction noise that the zoom <laughs> filter was trying to filter out so there's some there's a few points where uh you you, you don't lose anything but where like the the audio kind of 
pulls back a little bit, you should still be able to hear everything great. Uh, I took a listen to it and and I I think it, it it's still uh, it it still sounds really good. So yeah. All right. So thank you again for uh, coming in. Um, and Ryan and I will see you on the other side of my interview with Anna Isabel. I am uh, via Zoom. I am so lucky to get to revisit um, with uh, with a dear friend who I am so honored to uh, still be um, in contact with after four years uh, since we've seen each other. Um, and uh Anna and I met in 2018 doing West Side Story at the Guthrie Theater, and um, and now Anna has uh, been able to go on and I don't know do do some other things, few other things, uh, including um, getting to be a part of Steven Spielberg's and Tony Kushner's uh, reimagining uh, remake of the um, of the classic musical version of West Side Story, the movie. Um, Anna Isabel, I am so thrilled to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, for reaching out. I was so excited to hear from you and, you know, to know your audience, know that you have a podcast. That's really cool. Um, so I'm just happy, happy to be here and to have a conversation with you. It's been a while. It has been a while. Those were, uh, yeah. So in 2018, um, you came to uh, you came to the Twin Cities to do West Side Story. You played um, you played Anita, and um, in well, I, I, I you know, and I think I mean this has been four years since I think we've told we we've I mean, maybe I've mentioned this, but you were very uh, you know you were very intimidating uh you have a well yeah i mean just because you 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 come off you, you know you came in you're playing anita you brought a lot of your confidence and you brought a lot of confidence to that role to your whole you know you have done a whole bunch of things in your life obviously prior to west side story so um you, you know it, it felt to an outsider like oh this is a person who has a very a good sense of self. She knows a lot about who she is. And that was, and, and, you know, being, you know, someone from Minnesota and, you know, it was like, like, okay, how is she, she's going to, okay, is she going to be, uh, do we have to like kind of walk on eggshells? Is she going to be, you know, the kind of person that, it, or, or is it going to go the other way? And she's going to be sort of the ringleader of all of the craziness that's about to happen. And I think we got more towards the latter once we all, uh, during the rehearsal process, we had that great party at that board member's house. And I think that's when uh, at least several of us got a chance to sort of see, oh, no, Anna is just cool. She's going to, she's going to be, I think she's going to be the backbone. Um <laughs> And you and you and you were and your performance uh, as um, as Anita was one of the single greatest performances, <clears throat> excuse me, single greatest performances I've ever been fortunate to be associated with. Um, you were just tremendous. My uh, my co-host, Ryan, who couldn't join us for the interview, um, also wanted me to make sure uh, to, to to express to you, uh, as he put it, he said it your performance was so good it knocked him out of his comfort zone um in in that performance and i and i well and i think that that was that was a big thing um that uh you know that you and and mia as maria um and our choreographer maya um you know it, you guys intentionally there was a lot of effort put into that production to make it feel uh, to, as as Maya and Joe Hodge, the director, said, you know, they wanted people to kind of sit forward in their seats a little bit, going, "Oh, this is this is not the West Side Story that that I know." Um, can you can you reflect back a little bit on that uh, on that perform on that production and, and your performance in it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh my God, it's been four years, but. I still remember with so much love and, and joy and pride. Uh, 
you know, my time in, in the Twin Cities was so incredible, like being surrounded by all of you, like the cast was incredible. Our choreographer, the director, everybody at the Guthrie is just so welcoming and loving and, you know, so great at what they do. That's why it's the Guthrie Theater. So to me, it was one of, one of my, my most memorable experiences, to be honest, in theater. Um, you know, I, I remember the audition, like it was today, I really wanted this role. I really wanted to work at the Guthrie. And, you know, I remember at the beginning, Joe Hash wasn't completely sure. Like, I think he was like analyzing um, if it was me or two other ladies that he had. And I really wanted it. So I was like pushing with my manager. I'm like, what's going on? Do I need to send him another audition or what? And then at the end, they gave me the role and you know, when I got there, I had that in my my mind. Like I I want to make I want to make them proud. I want to make this um, institution and and the director and the team that you know gave me an opportunity. You know, um, I want to make them proud. I want I want them to look back and be like, oof, thank God we went with her. Thank God we picked her. Thank God like we gave her an opportunity. Um, and you know, with that mindset, I, I I went to Minnesota, and you know, I tried my best to to be at the level of the Guthrie because it's a it's a, so respected, and everybody like was bringing an 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 A game, you know. So I, it was challenging for me. It, it's it's funny that you say that I I came across intimidating. It's story of my life. I need to work on that. Um, no, no. <laughs> I don't think you need to work on it. I'm just saying, you know, it's because, but I, but I get it. And, and, uh, and I, you know, and I don't want to uh, put words in your mouth, but yeah, you're, you're there, you're there to do your job. You're there to, you're focused on doing the best job as you can. Uh, and so to others. And so I, you know, it's on me that I, I read that as, okay, oh boy, she's, she's, um, but that, that uh, I'm, I want to, and also I had a, you know, I had a smaller part. I was glad hand. I wasn't, you know, so I didn't, you know, I didn't, wasn't part of the whole, you know, bonding experience of going through those choreography rehearsals, hours and hours and hours and hours. So, um, for me, which, um, that process of the choreography, um, was really challenging for me because I think this project inspired me to went back to dancing my dance training um because i was focused more in my in my singing training and my singing career for many many years and then after like before doing this i played evita but evita is is mo mostly singing even though i i was dancing in the show too comparing to anita that is she's more a dancer than a singer you know like um it was challenging for me. So even though I, I was like, I'm here, I'm going to do this. I know what I'm doing. I was scared. I was so nervous. And I have to say Maya um, helped me so much and, and our associate choreographer too, like they were so incredible with me and so patient and, and all the cast too. Um, it was just brilliant. I, I, I wish I could go back to the Guthrie at some point. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully that would be, you know, obviously that would be amazing. Uh, uh, you know, as and someone who history there, you know, I was <laughs> showing like, like sold out, like one of, I think Wait, the only completely sold out in, mm -hmm. in something like that. It, it was just, yeah, it, it broke, it broke a lot of records. It was so, uh, you know, and, and it, and it really blew people away. It was the first, uh, it was the first original, ver you know, like uh, it was the first version of West Side Story to not use the Jerome Robbins choreography. Uh, you know, it's it, it, in, you know, in the country, it was before the uh, the Evo Van Hove uh, Broadway version. Um, and uh, the 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 state holders of West Side Story were. Uh, watching the Guthrie like Hawks, making sure that our production didn't, uh, you know, didn't tarnish the legacy of it. They wanted, you know, they were, and if we used even the slightest nod to the Jerome Robbins choreography, they were going to like come down on the, on the show with a hammer. So, um, but anyway, yeah, the, the show was, the show was, uh, was spectacular. Um, 
I, I don't, no one worked harder than you during that production uh, and the rehearsal process. You, you know, to use an, to use a, 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 a sports analogy, you're, you're like the person who's the first one on the court in the morning and the last one to leave. Um, and, and it, and it did, it really set the tone. Uh, you know, we always, uh, well, okay. So behind the scenes, a little joke before we move on and talk about the, uh, talk about the movie, a little story. Anna used to come over and hang out in the old guy's dressing room, which was the me and, you know, the guys who played Krupke and Shrank and Doc and I was glad hand and they put all four of us old guys in the dressing room and we were right next door to Anna and Anna used to come over and hang out and, uh, and, and humor us by listening to all of our old timer stories. And, um, and well, it was, well, and it was great. And you, you know, because also you had, you, you had great stories that obviously coming from Puerto Rico, coming from uh, something of a more pop music background um but this what we always recognize it every time you left the room and i don't know if we ever shared this with with you but every time you left the room invariably within five seconds one of us in that room was would just be like oh my god that she is going she's gonna be a star she is so driven and so talented there is i mean this business can be cruel but if anybody can tame it it might be on isabel and so we were um so we were so thrilled to you know so the whole thing in 2018 we're doing this production of, of west side story and all of a sudden news breaks that steven spielberg is going to do a new movie version of west side story and and they were going to have uh you know have auditions they were going to be looking for people and excuse me they weren't just going to cast it with with stars they were going to try to be very um very intentional about their casting how did going from the twin cities spending a summer playing anita how what what was that process like going from from that point to to saying okay i i gotta find a way to be in this movie i gotta find a way to get get seen for this movie and finally finally booking it well first of all i want to make a comment about going to your guys like to your dressing room like <laughs> to, talk to you because it was it was incredible to me to be able to bond with veterans in the industry you know, because to me, like you, you are that, you know, you've been in the industry for many, many years. And I just wanted advice from people like wiser than me. And, and I remember I was looking for an agency and I was just like going over questions and answers, possible answers, because I've, I've been, you know, dealing with my English my whole life. And I have to say, you guys helped me so much because I was like, okay, what if they ask me this? And you were like, okay, you should answer something like this. Like, what are your role models? Or what, what is like, um, you mentioned Rita Moreno because she's from Puerto Rico. And I, I will always treasure all your advice and that time, like learning from, you know, from people older than me, not saying that you're old. <laughs> oh no, I, 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 I am old. It will, <laughs> I was grateful for that. And it was, to me, it was, it was great to be able to bond with, I wanted to make sure that I was bonding with everybody and, and, you know, get, getting the best of um, everybody in the cast and, you know, taking something from everybody at the Godfrey because that production was so special to me. And I felt, I felt like I was, I don't know, I, I was in a cloud. I was doing a show that I loved with people that I loved and in, in, in a great respected theater. And I, I treasure that opportunity. So I had to say something about it because I'm, I'm <laughs> that's why when you reach out, I was like, of course, let's do that interview. Like, I, I never forget the people that have done something for me in my path um, because I believe in, in gratitude a lot. And, um, even if it's like a small gesture, it means a lot to me and it's part of my journey. And I have to treasure that because like those steps has, um, have taken me 
taken me to where I am today. So thank you. And answering your question, like actually one of my self tapes, I sent it from the God three, one of the self tape that I sent for West Side Story in the movie. Um, I did it uh, during the, with Marcos, my Bernardo, during the, the run of West Side Story at the God three. Um, my audition process lasted seven months. Um, and I literally fought for this opportunity because I was like, every time I heard they were like doing another audition or still like I have friends sending self tapes. I'm like, what happened with mine? Like I reach out to my, my manager. I literally like hustled for this opportunity. I was like, I, we need to get to the casting director. We need to, you know, like really make this happen. Cause it's not, you know, not every day you get the director of your dreams, because honestly, Steven Spielberg was on my vision board since I was in middle school mm -hmm. um, to do a show or a show, no, a, a, a musical or a, a, a iconic story that I can that I can identify with, like, obviously, because I'm Puerto Rican, I have an accent. It's like perfect for me. So I'm like, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to make it happen. So my first self tape. My first audition was before going to the Guthrie. I did it in Puerto Rico. Um, it was in person with the casting director, um, not not the main casting director, but one of the you know they they had mm -hmm. like many like auditions all over the in Latin America, and I did it before the Guthrie. Then while I was in the Guthrie, I think I sent my second audition. It was a self tape. Nothing happened, and then it was right after. I finish um, a, at the Guthrie that I started hearing from casting. And then I did like another audition in Puerto Rico that actually gave me, I think that's the one that gave me the role because then, you know, everything started rolling and and I was called to do a, a an in-person audition with Steven here in New York. And and then that was it. But it, it, it was a it was a crazy journey. And but I'm I'm grateful that I that I did it. You know that I sure. was to to book the job. How wild was it the first day when you walked into the room and there uh, in the room is Steven Spielberg? Yeah, um, the first time I saw him was in in that callback. I. I don't forget the, I will never forget the date. It was November 14 and 15, 2019. Um, so a year after, 2018, actually. So that fall, yeah. 2018, I think so, yeah. Um, and it was it was incredible. Like I, I was so nervous. My mom, I remember my mom flew from Puerto Rico. <laughs> with me for that audition because she knew how like how big that was for me and she was like I want to be with you because I know you you can become your worst enemy and get nervous and be in your head and and um my mom flew from Puerto Rico she was waiting for me in, in the waiting room and she was like go 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 you got this and when I went in and I and I saw him I was like I remember I took a deep breath and then I saw him smiling and saying hello, like nothing. And he was like so casual, jeans, like a polo or something. Or it was like a, I don't know, it was like very cool shirt. And he had his phone, his iPhone in his hand, and he was just like recording. Obviously, there was a professional camera, but he was there like so simple with his own iPhone, also getting footage of the audition. And he was so welcoming. He's like, hi, hi, everybody. Oh, let's have fun. Like, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Immediately, like, um, I turned those nerves in that confidence that you were talking about. And I was like, you know what? This is mine. I really want it. I've been preparing myself my whole life for this. You know, since I was five years old, my mom and my dad put me in, in, in you know, I was in my mom's choir, training voice, I instruments. And, you know, my, my dad put me in ballet school since I was 10 years old. You know, I was the captain of the cheerleader team. So I'm like, I've done all this, all this whole life. And there has to be something there that tell that that reflects that I'm ready. So I'm just gonna trust that. And and I went for it. I, I I will never forget that I'm dancing with the partner that they assigned me. 
and he's recording with his iPhone, like super excited and <laughs> smile. And he comes to me and he's in my corner and I'm like, oh my God, Steven Spielberg is recording me like for his iPhone. And I'm just like dancing, you know, and all of that. And then he comes to me and he's like, you're having fun, right? I can tell, yeah. And he's like recording me and I'm like, yes, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I am having fun. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> um, it was awesome. And then I, I passed to the next round, which was like doing in front of him and the whole creative team. And, you know, when I enter the first thing, obviously I introduce myself, la, la, la. the casting director talks a little bit about me and I just went to him and I was like, I just have to say you've been um, part of my vision board since I was in middle school. And, and no matter what happens in, in this audition, I have to say that um, I just made a dream come true. And it's knowing you and being in front of you and having the possibility to work in front, of, like to show you my work. And he made everybody in the room was like, oh, so he... <laughs> He came out happy. I was like with watery eyes, and I just did two scenes. One of them, I I was so nervous. I had to literally yell at myself uh, because I kept forgetting the lines. I I always say that I I I don't know, but maybe that's why they picked me because I was like, "Come on, Anna, come on! Don't do this to yourself! Come on, come on, come on! Shake it, shake, shake it!" I was like, "I look crazy, like crazy." In between the two scenes because I was so mad at myself that I was like sabotaging myself with the nerves and I'm like come on Anna, come on you got this you, got this. you know <laughs> Things that's, like, pro that's yeah. probably totally why you got the part oh my god <laughs> I could just see people I could see the casting people and Steve I could just see them all behind the table going oh oh that's that's the fire we're gonna get from her <laughs> like, oh my god that's that's a riot. I love that. So, and then I did the scene and, and after that, you know, crazy moment of me like shaking it up, um, I finally, you know, did the scene and um, started crying and I think, yeah, it was positive after all. Um, and yeah, after that, like maybe a, a few weeks later, I got the call that I, that I got the role and it was, I, I think I was crying for like three days. Oh, I bet. I bet. Oh my God. Um, and was it always for Rosalia or was it, Where did you know, was it always specifically for that role or was it sort of, you could have been any number of roles? Yes, I, I never got the opportunity to like, to think, or I don't know if they, you know, took me in consideration at some point for Anita somehow, but I was always in the run for one of the shark ladies. Yeah. Um, that at least every time I auditioned, that that was the only thing that was available to me. And you know what? I was like, I'll take whatever is available because I at this point I didn't have a proper team. I just had like my independent manager, and it was really hard to get appointments for the leads. It was really hard to to see the script to see what what was available. So I just literally in Puerto, in Puerto Rico, I literally went on an open. Yeah, you know, I don't want to sound cocky, but I've I haven't done an open call since I was twelve years old. I think um, I'm now. I just go for a point. You know, I have appointments, and it's like you you don't have to wait in line or something. But in Puerto Rico, especially that you know, I have I have a career. I haven't done that in a while, and and for this movie, I didn't care. I made the line with everybody. I have plenty of people that are that were newcomers like oh my god that's Isabel. let's say hi you know but i was in the line like everybody just waiting for my turn so yeah i i i was like you know what i'm going for the shark ladies because it's what what's available and but once once i'm there i i want to try and book you know the best shark lady like what, yeah, yeah. what whatever is available between the shark ladies i'm gonna i'm gonna reach for the for the highest and then in that last audition in front of Steven is when we knew they were looking for Rosalia, Luz, were the two, like the two characters that they were mentioning, Rosalia, Luz, and the shark ladies. And Luz is, was a new character um, that Tony Kushner was, was writing. And it was like, also like, like Rosalia, one of the best friends. 
and Rosalia, what I knew from her, you know, it's what we see in the in the stage production, which like she sings America with Anita and she's always there. So I was like, I'm going for Rosalia. And then that's the one I got. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, so let's let's move on to you mentioned Tony Kushner. Um, and I had seen um, I'd seen on a post that you had made on on Facebook about how during the process, Tony Kushner was very open um, and and very uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he he openly sought out. He wanted to make sure that he uh, you know being a being a cisgendered Jewish white man that he wanted to make sure that he was trying that he was coming as close as he possibly could to capturing that authentic Puerto Rican voice that culture that vibe and so he had asked you and um, a few others uh, it, was it just was it just the uh, I think it was like you four ladies uh, there were four, four women or was there other guys or were there other people in there only women um, the rest were were, got, were male oh, oh okay it was that I I felt really proud to be the the female um, representation. Yeah. Yeah. So t t tell tell me a little bit about that. So he would he met with you guys a few times during throughout the pre production. Is that what 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 happened? And just would kind of get your feelings on things. Um. You know, I was called to to start. You know, showing up for rehearsals April fifteen, two thousand nineteen. And um, it was only me, the the two leads, which was Ariana DeBose and and Rachel Zegler, and the lady that plays uh, the actor that plays uh, Luz. It was only four ladies: the shark, the shark boys, and the shark ladies. I'm sorry, the shark boys and the Jets. Um, which this this here is the Jets T-shirt. Ah, uh, nice. It's like the we yeah. all. We all created these logos. Like I, I should, I should have the shark one, but it's it's dirty. It's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. With the uh, with the uh, uh, you know with, with all it just needs is ET behind one of the uh, uh, the flying flying one of the jets, and it's a perfect yeah. Amblin. Yeah. And the shark T-shirt that we created with, um, with Jaws. Nice. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Anyway, going back to the to the story of Tony Kushner, um, we it was four ladies and the Jets and the Shark, right, for the whole first month, and then later in the process, like a month and a half later of rehearsal, then the Jet girls joined and the rest of the Shark ladies joined. So in that first month and a half, that it was only four ladies and Jets and Shark men, um, Tony Kushner maybe after the first or two day, first two days he showed up and he's like i would love to create a committee um i'll you know pay, he was kind enough to say like i'll pay you guys separately i just want to have your input um on the script i just want to have like meetings with you guys and discuss the script like talk about the spanish the, the Spanish, like about your culture, like ask you questions, see your opinions, see how how the script feels, like tell or like tell or acted by Puerto Ricans. So I would say that with us was like the first those first drafts, and 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 he because I was you know I was there. He from out of those four ladies, he picked me, and and some of the shark shark men that were in rehearsal, and literally it was like. Just like going to a room with him, a separate room with him, a long table. Uh, we were all seated with like nice scripts, and and that gave me the opportunity to see the script before most of the cast because Steven Spielberg believes in not giving the script with enough time because he wants to keep the spontaneity. Um, but I had the opportunity to see it a little bit uh, before everybody else. And he literally like bought donuts, coffee for everybody. <laughs> like imagine this incredible experience of being able to sit in a room with one of the best writers of all times and um and of this times and chat about his work and his input and our input and like the fact that he could listen 
to me and, and to really take in consideration what I was saying. I remember that he was even consider uh, taking in consideration um, doing uh, somewhere in Spanish. And because of my mu my background in music, um, I came, he was really impressed and I will never forget these days because I, I felt so, so proud. Um, I went home and I'm like, I need to make a, a, a translation of, of somewhere in Spanish. I, I, I need to do it. I, I'm a songwriter. I have the, the capacity. I worked on it. And the next day I had three different versions of somewhere in Spanish. And I just showed it to him. I sang it to him and he was so impressed. He was like, oh my God, Anna, this is an amazing job. But like, you're going beyond what I'm asking you guys to do. And I was just like, I'm like, I'm so proud to be here seated with you and to have the opportunity to show you what I'm capable of doing. Yeah, yeah. At the end, they decided to go with classic, somewhere but right but there i mean they they did do a classic somewhere but they uh they, you know they did change it up a little bit and and have uh uh miss moreno sing it yeah. um were there any uh were there any discussions amongst the cast or or were you privy to any of 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 those changes or decisions um you know you said you didn't get to see really the, the you know you got to see the script a little bit beforehand but you don't um you know the rest of the cast didn't really get to see it was there any sort of discussion of like oh that's that's different okay we'll see how that goes you know like how i'm assuming most of the people that were in um that that were in the movie with you probably at least had some cursory knowledge of the original movie and at least understood what a classic uh the the original is yeah um our main concern was as puerto ricans to make sure that our you know th that we were in uh, mistreated or or uh I would say my words maybe in america you know like puerto rico you ugly island island of tropic diseases like um those lyrics were a little bit like ouch to me you know um and i was one of the ones you know making a campaign about it i was like i think you you need to talk to sunheim um and i think and it was really funny because me telling tony kushner like i think dr sunheim and if you if you really <laughs> want this to um to be fair and respectful um i feel like you should say something different you know and it happened if you if you notice uh, the lyrics in america um are, are have been changed you know mm -hmm. Certain. And 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 Sunheim was part of the process. Like he, like he, Tony took all our notes. He came with options. We came with ideas too. And with that, he went to Sunheim. They discussed. He came back. And then when we were at the studio, we still when we were recording the soundtrack, Sunheim was there, and they were still like, Ah, Ariana, can you try this line or can you try this one? Can you? And then we were still like. Mm, that doesn't feel right, Tony. Like, ah, ah, you know, like it was a discussion and it, and it felt really nice because I feel like 60 years ago or like um, 60 years? No, 1960s to 20, how, how many years have passed the original? Oh gosh, that thing has got to be, it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be 50 years old here. Give me two seconds or I'll find out here. But um, I'm, I'm just loving the fact that you're like, uh, Tony, you're gonna have to go hash this out with Steve. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the type of environment that that we that he created. Right, and that well, and that that makes to me that's 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 huge. That you know these, and it's part of why they you know it it, it speaks to how they are able to get to that level. 1961. So 61, that'd be 40, uh, 40, 50, 60 years. Yeah, about 60 years at this point, that movie um, 
the original movie, but it speaks to uh, probably why they have attained the level that they've attained is because they create an environment that is going to get the best out of the people that they're that they're working with and in this case i think uh it it sure sounds like not just from you but reading other things is that it 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 was important to prioritize that openness that dialogue that sense of collaboration um in in order to make sure that the story if they're going to retell this classic story if they're going to do it and do it right that's the environment that had to had to exist yeah um yeah i i i am a forever fan of tony kushner and you know steven spielberg as well um i just had the opportunity to you know to have this conversations with tony and and to see the way he really listened and he was really concerned and responsible and you know um like I said, taking in consideration. So to me, that's really admirable, and that makes him even bigger in my eyes. You know, because uh, not everybody at his level will be open to, you know, to do that. And yeah. it's just it, it tells a lot about him. And, and yeah, uh, I'm so proud to have been part of it, and and you know, to just like have a little of say, like say that, yes, in this version, that's one of the biggest, like maybe changes from the original West Side Story and this one that you have Puerto Ricans, real authentic Puerto Ricans having a say over the script or having a say at least about certain lines in, in the songs or, you know, like um, also you had Puerto Ricans playing the sharks, um, the shark ladies or the sharks uh, men. Um, and that's something that the in the original movie um, wasn't wasn't a reality. You know, you yeah. have people that were like <laughs> um, it, they were like painting their skin to make them look more Latinos, uh, but they weren't Latinos. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I you know, and I do think that that uh, you know, when you think if you're going to ask the question of like why this musical and why now, why this movie and why now um it it, uh it's i mean obviously it's a classic story it's romeo and juliet but to get it to get a chance to have a movie version of this classic story that features uh features the the cultures and the people that it are you know that are represented in it um uh, to me that is uh that is worth worth exploring doing the story again um how how do you feel like did, did you have any well not concerns but i mean how did you feel about the fact that that they were they were doing this this movie again telling this story again um getting a chance to do it as a puerto rican woman uh you know how 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 it was how did that impact you how did that uh you know how did how did that affect you going through that whole the whole filming process um i would say i was always so proud um to be a part of it and i i felt you know uh they were gonna do it anyway so why not being a part of it and um regardless of what other people will say like oh why re doing it like working on a remake of the original like that's so perfect why changing it and i'm like you know what i think you know there's so many people out there that didn't know about west side story until now because there's a new generation you know there's 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 people growing with only um urban music reggaeton at least in the latin market you know like they they they're growing up with it's such a new vibe of music and theater and story so why not making this iconic musical um an american classic and you know uh, making it approachable now to the new generation and 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 fixing certain stuff and you know reimagine certain stuff in a way that it's more um <clears throat> palpable and, and maybe uh, uh 
have more access to these new people that are growing up and that they that unless they're in a theater class probably they won't see the original you know sure that's a great point because uh, obviously and also younger people if they are going to go back and watch the original i, I gotta imagine it's got to be pretty hard to get past those stereotypes knowing that oh that's a dude who's painted his skin yeah. uh you know it, it and and that's gonna take away from you know you can it, it all it does will say well yeah that's i mean yeah i can see why that was the great you know a great production in 1961 but well, this way, there's a version of this story that that yeah, that younger people, especially younger people um, uh, in in the Puerto Rican community, uh, can look at and say, okay, yeah, here's a here's a here's a authentic here here's a story of that period of time, of that era of of United States history in New York, told in a musical theater fashion that feels a little bit more real does that does that make sense yeah completely yeah um and not only puerto ricans i think uh, people from all over the world because you'd be impressed i have some friends that i was like oh i mean west side story and they're like like don't tell me that you don't know what west side story is you know like because we're in a world that we have so much things to see right now and people are like just about what's in the moment what's trendy you know that it's so great to me it's so great to give a little bit of history to those people out there that are not necessary not necessarily know what West Side Story is and yeah. the story of like what happened with Puerto Ricans and you know Irish people or like that that territorial competition um some people don't know that, that yeah, that, and it's actually uh, still a reality nowadays in certain capacities. So it it still brings a lot of issues that we're still struggling with um, as a society. Um, it's great to talk about it. Yeah, I, I mean, and that was that was uh, to me one of the 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 production design of it, and the uh, you know the 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 tearing down and building up of Manhattan. The tearing down of these neighborhoods that that where the where we had you know pockets of of different ethnic groups um, and and how especially you know Robert Moses I love the little nod to Robert Moses and putting the highway right you know there's going to be a, a highway going right through uh, this area so it was all getting torn down loved all of, to me that was one of the, to me that uh was one of the strongest elements of it that i don't remember from the first version and i could just be um not remembering correctly but there was a a much greater sense of the larger community um in that uh you know a, a, a larger sense of the puerto rican community yeah. um not just the teenagers uh, and and young men and women as part of the sharks but that it was this and and to me that helped it it, it gave more gravitas for what the what the sharks were fighting for um yeah it um it, it that that whole element of the of the community i felt was was really really strong um, was that something that you like I think about the America number and how that ends with just the dancing in the street and how many people are either involved in the dance or watching the dance. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, that was such a great uh, such a great establishment of the larger picture um, of what was at stake. Oh yeah, especially America it's it's a great example of what we are. And I think, you know, the fact that you, like, we shot America during a whole month, it was 10 days in the streets of New York City and being able to celebrate that number with real Latinos, because we were all Latinos, you know, uh, you had a group of Puerto Ricans, but also have Cubans from Colombia, pa Panama, you know, it was a, a Latinx community and it was, it was so incredible and it, it filled my heart with joy every time we were like shooting a scene of america and just like celebrating outdoor even even though we had like a heat wave with us, like a hundred degrees <laughs> and we were with these gowns and you know, it, 
was really hard. You know, we were having so much fun, and and, and you know, I was so you know, like I said, full of pride because I'm like, wow, we're telling this story and we're like celebrating our culture for real. You know, it's like Latinos dancing and you know how we are. Like when when we have a, a little party happening here, everybody want to be part of it and watch. And, and be there and celebrate. That's that's a little bit of our culture um, as Puerto Rican Latinos. So it was great that um, our choreographer and director and Tony and everybody like involved decided to to um, put America or, or make America different in this new version um, because in the original it's in a rooftop, right? And it's only mm -hmm. like, um, the the shark men and shark ladies, and you know it's great. But I feel like this has like a boom, like an upgrade version where you can, like, like you're saying, you can see more of our, more of our culture and more of our um, spirit as, as Latinos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would agree. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the original movie uh, kept it sort of more in line with what the stage production is. And, and one, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, a good film adaptation will do is make sure it takes advantage of the film medium and, wow. and it can tell in like, especially in that, that particular scene is a great example of telling, uh, of pulling back and, and increasing the scope of, of the message that is being sent. And I, I really, yeah, that was, that was really tremendous. Um, I, I can't end without asking about the fact that you're now friends with an Academy Award winner. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, how exciting was it to see uh, a friend, a colleague, someone that you worked your butt off with and spent day after day with uh, get recognized with an Academy Award? How, how was that? Incredible. I'm extremely proud of Ariana. Um, I was, you know, right by her side during the whole process. And, you know, I was able to see the good, the, the not that good, the insecurities, the, the strengths and, 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 you know, being inspired by her work ethic and, you know, by her in general, like trying to, you know, figure this out and, how can I, you know, growing, she, she grew up in, in, in the States and, but she had the Puerto Rican side through her dad that she has never met. Um, so it's, it was, it was a challenge for her and, you know, she, she was asking for support and, you know, learning from us as well, but also doing her own thing and, and then bringing her, you know, Afro Latina side too, like, you know, her, her black culture to this too. And, and it, you know, all the, those experiences of feeling like a minority in, in, in many ways. And, you know, seeing her like being recognized, it's just, it's, it's like we are all winning with her, you know, um, because we were a, a big family and, and it, that's the ambience that Steven created, you know, that they're very supportive and, you know, working together. So <clears throat> celebrating her, and, and seeing her winning all the awards this season, not only the Academy Award, but like all of the awards, it's, mm -hmm. been, it's, been, it's been incredible. It's been really uh, inspiring because, you know, if, if, she, if she made it, I can make it, right? And, and it's like, wow, wow, you know, like it's, it's so great to being able to see it um, so close and taste it so close with her and also, with like being part of a best picture uh <laughs> best picture nominee and then we won a golden glove as the best best cast and the mm -hmm. best so, yeah um i have no words it's been an experience to remember and so inspiring and so so many emotions at the same time it was i was overwhelmed at some point um but I'm so happy for her, for Steven, for the whole movie. And I'm proud to be part of it. I'm really proud. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, what, what's, so where, where, what happened, what is happening now? I, I, I know you just, um, uh, have you really, has the album been released yet or just the single? No, I have a single out called Gloria. Um, it's out in all digital platforms. It's just like a, a little taste of what the album is going to be, but the album is going to be more um, uh, 
rhythmical and we're working on it. So it, it, I think it's going to come out for August or September. Um, I'm excited that I'm finally back with a music label. I, I was an indie artist for eight years. Um, so I got this opportunity of signing with a with an important Latin label and and I'm I'm so looking forward to, you know, uh, keep working on my music and putting it out to the world again and you know not not forget about that side of me that is really important to me. But I'm also working on my acting craft. I'm I'm about to graduate from Terry Knickerbocker Studio. It's a, a studio that I've always that Terry coached me for West Side Story for my last session. And he's been a person that I really trust in terms of my craft. He was encouraging me. I want you to do the two year program. I, you know, I want you to be like Sam Rockwell that he came back and studied at my studio. Like, you know, artists like Natalie Portman that had they stopped their career to do like two year programs and stuff like that. So that's exactly what I've been doing this last two years. And now I graduate in May, in May. So I'm really proud of that. And I feel like as an actor, um, there's a before and after me with this program. And I'm, I'm really excited to now go out to the world, start auditioning and, and you know, see what's next for me in terms of my, my acting career. That's awesome. That's super great. Well, I mean, obviously uh, I, um, I'm so thrilled uh, to, to see the, uh, the heights and the journey that you're on so far. Uh, I cannot wait to see where, uh, where all of this head, where all of this takes you. Um, you know, I, I, I am so honored to be able to call you my friend. I am so proud of you uh, to, to be your friend. One of my favorite things I can't, I don't know if it was on one of your social media pages or on one of uh on one of Tony Kushner's, but there's a photo of you and Tony smiling for the camera and Tony's wearing his Guthrie t-shirt. And wow. yeah, he's wearing a, he's wearing a Guthrie t-shirt that, you know, Guthrie across the set. And, and like so many of us, especially those of us who are, um, you know, we're in West Side Story and others who know Tony from, from when he, uh, when a couple of his shows were done uh, and he debuted a, a show at the Guthrie. Um, we're like, oh my God, it's all come together. <laughs> but um, yeah, it uh, is. So we, um, yeah, I just, you know, I think the world of you, I am so, uh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited for you. And I cannot thank you enough for, uh, for sitting and chatting with me for a little bit. I, I just, this, this was an absolute treat. Yeah, thank you for having me. And, and you know, you have a friend in me forever, even if, if we haven't talked in, in in months, like I said before, in months, in years, like I yeah. said, like I said before, like every every person that it's part of my journey at some point, I'm, I'll be forever grateful. And and the Godfrey and, and that West Side Story production was meant the world to me. And, and the fact that, you know, Joe believed in me and all of you guys helped me to be, became a better artist. And right after that, I booked West Side Story, the film. It's just like so important to me. So you'll always have a friend here and I can't wait, you know, to the, the podcast. And I hope everybody out there keeps supporting this great podcast. And, and you know, I'm, I'm proud of you as well, because, you know, it, it takes it takes courage to keep reinventing ourselves to uh, after after uh, you know difficult situations like this world pandemic so i'm excited that you created this podcast and and that we're talking so thank you for having me oh thank you so much all right so that was uh that was my discussion with anna isabel i uh, wow. sure hope yeah i sure hope that you guys enjoyed it boy it was I mean, it was a treat. I was kind of floating for a good couple hours after that, just because she is, uh, she's just such, she's just so cool. She's so she's cool. She's dang delightful. Am I she's getting that right? <laughs> I, I believe that is what I, what I texted Ryan. I'm like, that Anna Isabel is ding dang delightful. That was a fun, that was a fun little message to get. <laughs> yeah. And I it's, like, you know, uh, awesome. It's yeah. true. It's you knew true. that already, but it's good to have that confirmed. Yeah. Uh, you should come out of this feeling really excited about art, about just how things are, how, just how special things can be sometimes. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what, you know, but I have something I have to say, which is a bit of a downer this week, the Supreme court of the United States declared 
that uh, Puerto Ricans don't have this all the same rights as the as other Americans have. Um, it, you know, we don't get political on the show deliberately because if we did, that's probably all I would ever do. Is sit down <laughs> yeah, with my raspy voice here that I have now, um, from screaming at the heavens all the time. It, it, that's the travesty. I don't know what to say about that. I can't believe that that happened. I don't like that that we're living through times where the highest court in the land just decided that somehow Puerto Ricans are less American than, the, you, than any of us. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, yeah. you can get into the details of what it is. I, I will spare you all that. But look into this if you care. It, it, the ruling is out there and it's it's heartbreaking. And I just want to say that we don't really accept that at all here at the show. And so, yep. you know. Um, and if we and if we want to do something about it, we need to be pushing for them to become our fifty-first state. Amen. Um, they need to be. Uh, you know, I, I've always said, hey, if we don't want to redo all the flags, let's just combine the Dakotas um, or something, and that way we can still have our precious fifty nifty United States. Hey, but, we've had um, a lot of flags throughout the years. It's cool. I know so there should be still there's be nice. There's no reason why we can't add another star. It won't Good. look any different. It still will look great. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, because they and are. We'll be, they... In, we'll be enriched for having done it and for, and it's a shame that we even have to, but it, mm -hmm. apparently that's the, that's the next step. So. Yeah, apparently those are the priorities that we need to make sure that we, uh, that we have in this country. Anyway, you're right because Ryan and I could uh, absolutely go down uh, a hole. Yeah, we won't do that. Just be but this, but no, anyway, it, it's it, to me it's weird that earlier this week that ruling came down and and we just spent a great time talking about uh, you know cultural things from an artistic standpoint. Of course, that's what we're that's what we're here for. But we just wanted to say that. Cause... Yeah. Um. But yeah. So uh, we cannot thank Ana Isabel enough. Mm. um she, you know she's just uh she's just tremendous um and uh her album as she mentioned in the interview her new album her new single is out now and uh called gloria and i um her album uh she is hoping will come out in the i believe she said it's planned for the fall did gloria got uh, a video that we can link to the show uh i don't know if the official video is out yet i remember her posting that uh that it was being worked on so i don't know well, if look it's still if you're new to anna but... just go to youtube and type it on <laughs> in we'll, All right we'll be sure to <laughs> spell her name yeah. and stuff she so just cut and paste it right out of our description and put it in there put it out on google you know learn you can there's a lot to learn there's a lot to listen to yeah she's and extraordinary she's, She's uh yeah she is super tremendous and and very very as, honored to have her a part of yeah this. and uh in boy I just I just can't Im there's just going to be big things from her she's so uh she's so talented super nice she's got she's 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 the full uh you know the full package she's the full she's the real deal she's got she's got kindness she's got empathy she's got super amounts of talent um and a whole bunch of drive. Uh, she's always striving to improve herself. She is, she, if you're looking for role models, uh, yeah. I mean, she's kind of one, she's one of my role models. Um, uh, <clears throat> well, boy. Um, so anyway, so, we're, uh, so we yeah, have so a we week have... off coming up here to come down from our Anna Isabel high <laughs> that we're on. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> after that, we got Rob and Michael back for another round of, of a, weird double features that should be a blast to talk about I would that expect. one's that one's gonna be bonkers there's all yeah. we're all over the place with that one <laughs> uh and actually people have asked can we watch the double features ahead of time hey Ro joel and ryan what are the double features well i'll, I'll quick run through them um uh, rob is got a couple of noir films uh boy and am i gonna remember the woman in the window these are the mm -hmm. old version of the woman in the window with, uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember the actor's name, the gangster actor. I shouldn't call him that because uh, Rob's whole point <laughs> is he's trying to prove he's more than that. But woman in the window. And then what's the other one called? Something Street. Scarlet I can't Street. Scarlet Street. So that's his uh, double feature. Edward, Edward G. Robinson. Edward, Edward G. Robinson. G. And Robinson. 
and I believe they're both Fritz Lang movies. So that's exciting. That's because that's and that's the that's the link. We there's links between each of these double features that we. Uh, yeah, that my we my my double feature is uh, we talked about a few weeks back on the Peter Hyam show. We're going to talk about them again with new people. Uh, Capricorn One and Outland by Peter Hyams from uh, 77 and mm -hmm. 81, I want to say. Sounds and right. Joel, one of his all-time favorite movies, if not his all-time, maybe not his oh, best it's, ever movie, but it's all-time like, yeah. favorite. It's one of, favorite. it is, oh my God. It's your baby, uh, it B is for my... Victory, or as it was known in America, in North American audiences, just Victory. Victory. Did I do Directed that right? by, yep, Victory. <laughs> Directed, directed by, by John Huston of all people and, and John Huston's <laughs> next movie which is Annie the the widescreen big big uh 1982 came out at Christmas version of Annie it's crazy that because one it feels very John Huston-ish the other doesn't but it kind of does we'll talk about that a little bit next week yep. an, that was an extraordinary late 70s early 80s it was actually both 80 and 82, right? Two years apart. Uh, two years apart, yep. That's a stunner. And and Michael's got two beloved films, 9 to 5, <laughs> which you all know the song. A lot of you probably know the movie, but if you don't, that's a good one Revisit to watch. Revisit the movie. Listen. Revisit the movie yeah. through your through your current eyes. Uh, it's fun. It's, it, it's super yeah, it's, fun. It's, it's a very good, very smart film for its time, I think. And uh, his, his, one of his all-time favorites, also uh, Big Business, which shares an actor between the mm -hmm. two. And, and uh, that's going to do it. That's going to be a big show. I was, I we'll have to cram that <laughs> yep. in an hour. No, none of this pontificating and ch chatting before and after will have to fly out of here on that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. However... I cannot guarantee that I will not go off on a lengthy discussion of Osvaldo Ardiles and Soren Lindstedt and the effect they had on me as a uh, as an athlete. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> hey, and Bobby that's Moore, and yeah, yeah. So a couple of weeks, that's going to be the show. We got uh, supposedly we have a Blade Runner deep dive coming up. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yep. We got uh, maybe for the summer uh, top five Jaws ripoffs. So those of you um, who came here just for honor because you know her, <laughs> I think it's only fair to, to give you a little taste of what the show actually is. We do. Yep. Week. yep. Um, we are. Yeah. We have a, hopefully a uh, Elizabeth Gaskell show coming up with our good friend, uh, Dana. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, was, the author who, of Cranford and uh, wives uh, and daughters North, and, and, and North, North and South. South. Yep. So. Boy, I hope that show comes together. Cause I love the uh, Cranford. Yep. Uh, well, North and South especially, but you guys will. If you want to see us go get really excited about costume dramas and to sip tea and to talk about the town gossip, uh, that's the show for you. It's going to be awesome. Indeed. Hey, have you watched uh, The Gilded Age on HBO? Speaking of costume yes, dramas? Yeah, I watched The Gilded Age. Oh, so good. Is um, it? I, uh, yeah, I love it. I loved it. I, I um, like it for what it is. It's, and I like it because it's not bridgerton but I, <laughs> but it's but i i question whether i question some things about it mm, okay um yeah well, and i was uh, a pretty big downton abbey fan but i also question some things about that we can talk sure. about that someday. yeah i mean it's it, it you know, yeah it's this is julian fellows just he's getting he's, he's good and he's working at yeah. a really high level but yeah. what are we celebrating and what are we questioning from this era and these sort of this like robber baron time and place and who are these people really uh, you know mm -hmm. i just we the show just doesn't really get into that enough for my taste and i a little bit a little teeny sure. bit sure but but i wish it was a little bit more so we'll see we'll, we'll see but it yeah. it carries the day it certainly mm -hmm. passed the time like i was involved in it so it's not i'm not gonna thing. lie i got a man i got a huge man crush on uh, mr russell it's part of why I grew my beard. Yeah. Um, it's just because that that dude and his voice, uh, I'm just like, oh, I want to be your friend. Um, and I get to be part of a costume drama coming up here on stage here in the Twin Cities coming up. So uh well, and um, what's your face? Who's the who's the grand dame on that show? Christine Baranski. Yeah. Who's she that's somebody I really did used to like. <laughs> right. And her last two projects, obviously the good wife slash the good fight in this yeah. Jeez. wow 
Well, yeah. So, yeah. So she, um, she's completely turned me around. If she walked in the door right now, I'd get down on my knees and <laughs> be really appreciative there. She's awesome. Uh, all right. Well, great, great role for her. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Sorry, a little bit of so, extra, um, little costume drama extras for you at the end of the and show. Indeed, indeed. So if you liked what you uh, saw, if you want to leave a comment or or get back to us on on something, you can reach out to us at the Movie Show with Joel and Ryan page on Facebook, at Ask Joel and Ryan on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, ask our Joel our and Facebook stats say we answer a hundred percent of our inquiries within 24 hours. There you so go. That's, we'll that's get, a perfect score, you guys. Think about we'll get that. back to you. Uh, yeah. we also you can also email us at ask Joel and Ryan at gmail.com. And uh, and if you are watching the video version of this, that means you are already on YouTube. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, all right, everybody. We can't thank you enough. Once again, giant thanks to Ana Isabel. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan. Remember, all views and opinions represented in this podcast are personal and belong solely to the speaker and do not represent those people, institutions, or organizations that the speaker may or may not be associated with, unless explicitly stated. None of these views and opinions were intended to malign or deceive. And now, here's the producers, circa 1982, to play us out.